You are looking at live pictures of the SpaceX reusable Falcon 9 rocket it's and the Dragon spaceship set to launch. The there we go. Uh, there it is from Cape Canaveral on a mission to provide more than 5,800 pounds of supplies including experiment SpaceX hardware and food to the International the Space Station. Look at it go. This is the 14th resupply launch to the space station by SpaceX since 2012 under a multi-billion dollar contract with NASA, and it's the company's seventh rocket flight so far this year. You know, it's so ironic that we're talking about Tesla yeah, and the problems that it's having when the same guy that invented that company invented the company to put this rocket up there. It's amazing. Joining us now on the phone is former NASA, NASA astronaut Tom Jones. Let's listen for one second, then we'll bring Tom in. At 1 minute 18 seconds after liftoff, this is the point where mechanical stress on the rocket reaches its peak because of the rocket's velocity and resistance created by Earth's Equal atmosphere. Supersonic. Supersonic. Vehicles experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. And confirmation of max Q. One minute, thirty seconds into flight. The second stage of engine chill has begun. Around two minutes, 35 seconds into flight, the nine Merlin engines will sequentially shut down. You'll hear the term MECO, which means main, which main engine cutoff. Boy, it never gets old. Let's go to former no, astronaut Tom Jones now. What's your reaction? Uh, Melissa, that's about as beautiful a launch as I've seen, except for maybe one or two of my shuttle launches. So mm -hmm. impressive to see that uh, rocket head up on its second flight to space so with a, a used or reused cargo capsule as well. So SpaceX is really putting the, their, uh, their reputation on the line using reused hardware, trying to lower the cost of launch to orbit. I mean, they've done a number of innovative things. We've seen them try to bring the rocket up and, and land it like a pencil on its tip. I mean, what do you think about the different things that they're trying to do, um, you know, versus the way the space program was run before, maybe? Well, I think they've built on the 50 or 60 years of NASA experience to try to innovate the way you get to Earth orbit. They've uh, built in the reusability on the first stage, which we've seen dramatically. It's almost out of a science fiction movie. Uh, now they're working on recovering the, the nose fairing or the nose cone from these rockets. And eventually they may try to recover even the second stage. And so, of course, the Dragon cargo capsule will be recovered after its month-long stay at the space station, might be used even again. And it's great experience for SpaceX because that same capsule, a modified version, will be carrying astronauts later this year up to the space mm. station. A very important test to get these cargo capsules up to build their experience towards human flight. Why is this important to people watching out there? And maybe they're in awe of what they're seeing, but you wonder, with so many things going on, why, why is this something that is important to us going forward? Well, the visuals are terrific. However, the, the real bottom line is that this lowers the cost of getting a pound of cargo or supplies or science experiments to the International Space Station. And we taxpayers are on the hook for these cargo runs. So if NASA can lower the cost of these cargo runs, they get to spend more of their funds, uh, about $20 billion annually for the entire NASA program. They get to spend more of it on exploration out to the moon to establish an outpost around the moon and then return astronauts there. And eventually, that, allow, that kind of uh, economizing and innovation will help us get more mileage on the way to Mars. As somebody who's been a part of the space program for so long, what did you think about the private sector and competition when things like this started to happen, and, and have your feelings changed? 
Yeah, I started working on this about 10 years ago, uh, advising NASA on a, a panel that was looking at commercial cargo launches just like this, with Orbital ATK, the other company involved, besides SpaceX. And we were skeptical at first, but it was good that NASA was trying a new way to lower the cost of getting its supplies to the space station, uh, which is, you know, of course, a long-run enterprise. You want to economize over the next 10 years of space station operation. So I've been brought around by the persistence and the technical excellence that SpaceX has brought to this, and they've really surprised us with being able to, able to meet these goals of reusing their hardware and uh, treating it more like uh, using an airliner than a one-way one expendable rocket. So that innovation might uh, be very useful for building landers to get humans back to the surface of the moon, reusing those landers rather than throwing them away. You know, it's, it's tremendous technology. My dad was involved in the space program as an engineer. My, both my sons are going to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama this summer. Can I ask Terrific. you selfishly, what would you tell my boys? Well, I would say they're in for another exciting 20 years ahead and uh, m many more opportunities across the board to participate in a space career than I had with just NASA as the only employer. Now, you know, SpaceX and Boeing and uh, Blue Origin and Orbital ATK, they're all going to be hiring teams of uh, space experts, including, you know, space plane pilots and adventure tour guides and hotel operators in space. A lot more opportunities to actually get your feet wet in this amazing, amazing enterprise. Sign me up. Yeah, there you go. My <laughs> husband's actually going for the family weekend as well. He wants to be an astronaut too, even though I think he, he might be a little old, but we're not going to tell him. Tom Jones, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it.